Our next amazing speaker is Dr. Yuan Ma. She received her PhD at Shanghai Jiao Tong University in China. And she's currently working at the University of Texas at Austin. The title of her talk is Spatial Imaging of GlycoRNA in Cells via DNA Aptomere and RNA in situ hybridization mediated proximity ligation assay. Yuan, the stage is yours. Thank you very much yeah, for introduction. And also, thank you, Leading Edge, for organizing such a wonderful symposium. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, today I will just take a one seconds to talk about my graduate work and then come up with the, this topic. So uh, for my graduate work, because we are in the chemistry department, we are good at to develop new, new kind of uh, tools or new kind of drugs. So when I'm a graduate student, we um, our work is lo uh, looking for the uh, development of the uh, nano, nanoscale drugs for the cancer therapy. So the challenge in this field is it's very hard to control the morphology, control the chemical composition. So in, in my work, I provide different strategies to uh, precisely control the components of the chemical drug and also the morphology for the, uh, for the nano drug. And this will in, in generate a, a very good cancer uh, therapy medicine to have high uh, therapeutic efficiency and a low side effects. And when I transfer to my postdoc research, my interest is to transfer to develop some sensors or imaging reagents to directly visualize the metabolites inside the cell. So today I'm going to share one of my recent work about developing an imaging method to image the glycoRNA inside the cell. So we know the uh, RNA are very important biomolecular, and there are more than 100 RNA modification has been identified. And this RNA modification can affect a lot of uh, cellular process, including the RNA structure and affecting the RNA stability. And in 2021, Professor Potosi and Professor Flying, they for the first time, they discovered a new type of RNA modification. They called it glycoRNA. So they identified the glycoRNA are present on the cell surface, just similar to the glycoprotein and the glycolipid. And they also find the glycoRNA are small non-coding RNA. And they discovered there are more than 200 glycoRNA with different sequence. And this glycoRNA can interact with CGLAC indicate there is some potential function of the glycoRNA. But what we know right now is only a small piece of the iceberg. So currently in this field, there are a lot of open questions. For example, how the glycoRNA is generated and what's their distribution on, on the cells and the tissue and what's their biological function and what's their relationship with the disease. So to answer these questions, actually we need a very powerful tool. For example, if we can provide a camera to directly see the glycoRNA on the cell surface. That can help to answer a lot of questions. But to develop this camera, there is a very challenging because if we see the surface structure, there are a lot of glycoprotein, glycolipid, and the non-modified RNA. So for the camera, it should have a very high specificity only for glycoRNA. And also the glycoRNA has low abundance. So the camera should have very high sensitivity to enable the um, very good experiment. And uh, we, we find there are more than 200 glycoRNA with different six, six, uh, sequence. So the camera should be universal and customizable to different glycoRNA. And finally, we want this tool to be user-friendly and reliable, it's very easy to use. So uh, taking all these um, requirements into consideration, uh, in my team come up with the first imaging method to visualize the glycoRNA inside the cells. We can call it a camera. It's based on the DNA aptomer and RNA in situ hybridization together with the proximity ligation assay. So it undergo the four step reaction. So in the first step, because we want to see the glycoRNA, so it has two components. One is glycan, another is RNA. So we need two probes to bind to the both sections. First, we use the glycan probe to bind into the uh, glycan part. So we know the, um, the conventional glycan binding reagent, for example, electing, it has a little bit of low binding affinity and not suitable for our application. So in this work, we use another binding reagent called aptomer. It's a single strand DNA can fold to the secondary structure, can act as very similar function to the antibody. So we use the sialic acid aptomer to bind to the terminal sialic acid in the glycoRNA to drive the glycan probe to the glycoRNA. And later we use the RNA binding probe. It can hybridize with the RNA part 
and then through the in situ hybridization. In this case, if we change the sequence of the uh, hybridization part, in theory, we can image glycol RNA with different sequence, so it's universal and customizable. So after we put the glycan probe and RNA probe close to the glycol RNA, then we can introduce two connectors. The connectors will hybridize with the two probe and form a circular structure, but there is a nick between the two connector probe. In this case, we can add the T4 DNA ligase to seal the nick and generate an intact circular DNA. And later on, the intact circular DNA can serve as a template, and the RNA binding probe can serve as a primer. With the help from the DNA polymerase, we can do the in situ uh, rolling circular amplification to generate a very long single strand DNA. And this DNA can hybridize with a reporter, reporter uh, DNA probe and to introduce the fluorophore to the DNA and then close to the glycol RNA. So in this case, we do the experiment in cells, we can find all the glycol RNA are light up by the, by, by the system and they are dot like signals. This indicates the distribution of glycol RNA on the cells. So um, after we establish the method, we do a lot of experiments to demonstrate it's reliable. So I show one of the experiments here. Um, since it, it's a method to detect, detect glycol RNA, so if we remove either the RNA or the glycan, the signal should totally go away. So in this case, we use RNAs to remove the RNA part, and we find that compared with untreated group, we can see there is bright signal of black RNA, and after RNA's treatment, all the signal is, has gone away. And the same thing happens for the glycosidase. After we remove the glycan part, we can see no signal will stay in, 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 the, in the system. This demonstrates our, uh, our camera can see, can see the glycol RNA, and this detection is semi-quantitatively. So after we validated this method, we want to use the tool to answer some biological question. So the first question come up in our mind is, how the glycol RNA uh, tra traffic go to the cell membrane? So we hypothesis it may traffic through the smell protein mediated uh, secretory exocytosis. To validate this hypothesis, we chose two, uh, two important marker. One is the V-snail protein, another is T-snail protein. We stand these two um, protein with this antibody. You can see the red, red signal means the uh, location of the T-snail and the V-snail protein. And then we stand the glycol RNA through the, uh, our method, we call it ARPLA. Uh, that can generate a purple signal. And then we, we over, uh, overlap two channels together. We find the red signal co-localized co with the purple signal. This indicates the glycol RNA undergo the cellular trafficking through the snare protein mediated secretory uh, exocytosis. And after the, we know the glycol RNA can go to the cell surface, but we are still interested to know where is the final location of the glycol RNA. So uh, because such as the glycoprotein and the glycolipid, which most of them aggregate on a domain called, called lipid raft. So we hypothesis the glycol RNA may also have similar property to, to localize on the lipid raft. To test this hypothesis, we use um, a lipid raft marker, it's called CTB and ganglocyte to stain the lipid raft. And you also use the ARPLA to stain the glycol RNA and compare the two signal. We find the glycol RNA co-localized with the lipid raft on the cell membrane. So this is the first time for us to ob ob uh, observe the final distribution of glycol RNA on the cell surface. So these two examples shows our method can reveal the spatial information about, about glycol RNA. And after we get this information, we, we are thinking our method may become provide more information such as the abundance information. So we use the, our method to investigate the glycol RNA abundance change in different biological process. So one of the typical example is the immune response because we know the glycan is very important in the, in, in the immune response. So we hypothesis glycol RNA may also important in this process. So we use a very uh, typical cellular model, uh, the THP1 monocyte, differentiate that from uh, using the PMA to get to the resting macrophage and activate that through the LPS to get the activated macrophage. And we observe the glycol RNA change during the immune cell differentiation and activation. We find that after immune cell differentiation to the resting macrophage, the glycol RNA level significantly decreased. And after the resting macrophage are activated by the LPS, the glycol RNA level will increase. 
So we, we guess there may be some function of the glycoRNA in the activated macrophage. So inspired by this result, uh, we are thinking what's the function? We, so the, because we know the uh, immune cells should attach to the endothelial cells and pass through the blood vessel to activate the immune response. So this is the first experiment we want to test whether the glycoRNA can mediate the cell-cell attachment. So first we're using the uh, LPS activated macrophage and put it incubate together with endothelial cell and calculate the cell attachment efficiency. We find that the cell attachment efficiency is lower than the, um, than the resting macrophage. This may be because the activated macrophage has more uh, abundant of the glycoRNA. And uh, to test this hypothesis, we use RNAs to remove the glycoRNA of the activated macrophage. And after removement, we can see the data the cell attachment ratio decreased. So this experiment indicates the glycoRNA may have some function in the cell-cell attachment. So this, uh, for this experiment, we just provide a clue for the function of glycoRNA. And in the next story, we want to know whether the glycoRNA is related with disease, such as cancer. Um, so we use uh, using a cell line model, which is a healthy breast, breast cell uh, cancer breast cell and the metastatic breast cancer cell to investigate the glycoRNA level in the three different kind of three different kind of cells. We find um, in the healthy cell the glycoRNA has the highest abundance, and in the metastatic cancer cell the glycoRNA level is pretty low. So this uh, this trend is pretty interesting because um, we, we all know that during the cancer malignant transformation the surface total sciatic acid level will increase, but glycoRNA follow a significantly different trend. It will decre decrease during the uh, cancer malignant transformation. This indicates the glycoRNA may have different regulatory mechanism in the cancer malignant transformation. So uh, here is a take home message. So the glycoRNA method we developed is the first method to visualize the glycoRNA in cells. It's based on dual recognition and has high sensitivity and the specificity for the glycoRNA. And we can use this method to reveal the spatial distribution of glycoRNA. For example, we find the glycoRNA can, uh, can travel to the cell surface through the snail protein mediated vesicles. And we also find the glycoRNA distribute on the lipid raft on the cell surface. And we, are, we can also use our method to reveal the uh, abundance change of glycoRNA in different biological process. We find that during the immune cell differentiation, the glycoRNA will decrease. And upon immune cell act activation, the glycoRNA will increase again. And it may have some function in the cell-cell uh, attachment. And finally, in the disease process, we find that the more aggressive uh, cell type will have less glycoRNA. So we believe our method is a very powerful tool for the glycoRNA studies. And we are also looking forward to more um, collaborations to investigate the glycoRNA. So for my, uh, my future research work, because we are um, from chemistry department, we have the ability to develop new kinds of tools. So we are very interested to collaborate with biologists to offer them the new tools and then use the tools to give them some new insight. For example, in the future, I will continue to develop more powerful imaging method to provide the spatial distribution information about glycoRNA. For example, uh, in the future, maybe we can provide a comprehensive sequence map for the uh, glycoRNA in the tissue. Yeah. And the second direction we are working, I'm trying to work in is developing new sequencing method because currently in this field, um, we know some group are also doing this kind of work, but we all complain about, wow, it's very hard for the sequencing job. So we identify there is a challenge in the sequencing method in this field. So we, we have our chemistry tool to develop new sequencing method to give us more information about the sequence profile of the glycoRNA, especially their relationship with disease, whether it can serve as some biomarker. And finally, we can also develop some glycoRNA manipulation method to help us to manipulate the glycoRNA and evaluate what's the um, outcome after the manipulation. In this case, we can identify the functions of glycoRNA in different biological process or even in the disease. So that's the three major area I'm interested in the future. So for this work, I would like to uh, thank my supervisor 
and also thank my collaborator for finishing this job, uh, finishing this work. And also thanks my other lab mates and my collaborators. And also thanks Leading Edge for giving me this opportunity to present the work. Yeah, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much for this beautiful talk. What a freaking cool tool. <laughs> Seriously, that's amazing. Any questions from the... Yeah, okay. Do you want to... That is so cool, I didn't even know these existed, so that is awesome. Um, I'm just curious if they're also found, these glycoRNAs are found on microvesicles, since like microvesicles seem to be loaded with RNA all the time. You mean the, uh, find the glycoRNA in the microvesicles? Yeah. Yeah, actually that's uh, another project ongoing in our lab, yeah. We have, actually we have identified the glycoRNA on the exosome, and the, the studies are still going on to identify the sequence. Actually, we developed some kind of the sequencing method, but not the perfect one. But we are uh, currently use that to study the sequence in exosomes. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. Every scientist will ask the question. <laughs> the first question. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, really nice talk. So uh, I was wondering, what is the nature of those RNAs? So which sequence do they have? Like, where do they come from? Like, is any RNA? Uh, yeah, I'm not from this field, so I'm not really familiar to. Uh, so currently, uh, the, so currently we ha only have one sequencing method, which is reported in the initial paper. So currently, in this field, only three papers. Yeah, one paper discovered the glycoRNA. The second paper used bioinformatics to uh, predict the glycosylation sites. The third paper comes from our group. This is the topic here. So um, because of the limitation of the current sequencing method, we can only see uh, the most of glycoRNA are small RNA, and some of them are uh, Y-shaped y RNA or tRNA. Okay. But this sequencing method still have limitation, including the, the people who, who discovered the glycoRNA. He is also developing new method, want to provide an unbiased sequencing profile. Yeah. But your probe uh, recognizes some RNA, so I guess you're using some I, sequence specific. Yeah, I, I'm using the high, most high abundance one, yeah. Okay, the U one. The U. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so as a proof of concept. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, that was really cool. Um, I was curious about your method of detecting them. So I'm assuming if this glycoRNAs are moving around, they're on the membrane. Do you have any idea of whether having your probe and having the DNA being formed and connecting those, whether that structurally affects its mobility on the membrane? Oh. Or, or if, what are they supposed to control to assess that? Oh, that's a very, very good question, yeah. So uh, first, in our work, because if you see our uh, workflow, it uh, takes four steps, right? So um, to achieve these different steps, first we need to fix the glycoRNA. If it's like cell and after the, all the treatment, the cell may change, yeah. And in the, in the future, we also want to establish some live cell imaging method. In this case, we don't want to in, fix the cell, right? But if you see the probe is um, anchored to the glycoRNA. So even if the glycoRNA moves, the probe will move together with, with glycoRNA. So in theory, we can tracking the, um, tracking the movement of glycoRNA inside the cell. So the live cell yeah. would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Jan. Thank you. Very nice talk. Uh, my question is, uh, this knowledge and this technique have been applied to other cells, not only mammalian cells. And I study parasites, so I'm interested in if this, have been, this can be applied to other microorganisms. Yeah. In theory, our method should be universal. And actually, we are optimizing the protocol to visualize glycoRNA in tissues, tissue slides, yeah. And I believe for other models, after some op experimental optimization, our method can be adapted to, to that model. Yeah. Other questions? That was a really great talk. So I was just curious if uh, the lab has since then uh, developed other uh, sensors in, in order to see the glycoRNAs like from two different um, types and to see if they localize to like different cells or different regions of the cell? You mean the uh, different glycoRNA? Mm, um, like if you've created one but designed it against uh, a different glycan or a different RNA? Oh, 
Yeah, actually, we do have the data. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect. <laughs> due to the time limitation. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I, due to the time limitation, I didn't show that. Yeah, actually, we are working on the multiplex microRNA imaging. Yeah, the idea here is we can using some orthogonal probe design to make sure this probe set only binds one glycoRNA, another probe set binds to another glycoRNA. In this case, we can image them together and show their um, interaction and distribution inside the cells. And to get, if we want to use that for other uh, glycan parts, we can also change the glycan probe. So in theory, that's reliable, uh, achievable, yeah. Awesome, let's join me in thanking Yuan again for the wonderful talk. Yeah.